All right, we're going to keep it pretty simple here. We're going to talk about the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, exactly what's happening on the market. We had Fed Waller basically come out of the gate today, uh, and he gave us a pretty good outlook of, of what to expect. We'll have this article down below. Um, you can kind of watch and listen to what he says. Uh, but there were some pretty big things we need to listen to. So first off, I'm just going to highlight some of the bullet points, take you through this really quick. Looking forward to the FOMC's December meeting. The data on the past few weeks have made me more comfortable considering stepping down to a 50 point. BP hike. Um, this is pretty interesting to overall see what he's talking about. Now, if we go into something that we need to watch for the next few days, along with jobs data, he's talking specifically of you know, jobs data and you know the big boy PCE. I won't be making any judgment about that until I see more data, including the next PCE inflation report, which for some reason the Fed absolutely loves PCE over CPI. And I would have to anticipate PCE comes out looking pretty decent because CPI did. Um, if we look at basically all the data leaks coming back over the past year, roughly, um, it's been CPI that hurts the most. Um, and typically, the other ones hurt uh, not as much as CPI typically. CPI has been the one that definitely has been ramping up the most over the past year. And then the next jobs report, which is tomorrow for the jobs, I believe PC is next week. Uh, we'll look at that here in a sec also. You can go in and see a little bit more of what he was saying, uh, but he's pretty clear uh, about what he's doing and he gives the notion of he's not going to be head faked by one report you got to love that like many others i hope the cpi report is the beginning of something meaningful it does not mention ppi uh, and persistent decline in inflation policymakers cannot act based on hope um, and i'm glad that they now they can agree on this because they did not agree on this before um, so at least I guess now we're on the right track. So looking at this, going to the market, we need to talk about a few things specifically. But before we get to that juicy stuff, I have to ask you to consider doing two things, liking and subscribing. Every single day I'm making videos and content for you based on the market, what I'm doing, if I'm sitting on my hands, if I'm going long, if I'm going short, you are the first ones to know. So let's get right into it. We're going to get into these charts. Um, and I want to urge people caution. That, that, that's my uh, food for thought on the day. Um, I, I know this video is a little bit later than usual, but I want to urge caution with where we're at. Um, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. So we're going to go down to something like the uh, one hour chart real quick so you can see. And I just want to cover where we are and kind of what needs to happen over the next, you know, day or so, right? Like going into this. So I think tomorrow you're going to get clear movement. I, I think jobs data will give you movement to the, either to the up or to the downside. Um, if we look over the past few days, if we go in and just look at what's happening right now based on volume, I mean, today was piss poor, one of your worst days. We had a great volume on the 10th, which I believe was Thursday, Friday, less in, impactful. It was a bank holiday, so I figured that's what played a toll there. Monday, terrible Tuesday, okay, you got a lot of that volume in the after hours, and then you know we have PPI, I believe, coming in that day also, which a lot of that came in basically in the morning, and then in the afternoon, there was no real continuation throughout the day, and then of course today, which was just awful. So um, I definitely want to make sure we're narrowing this down, and we can really make it visual where we're at. Now, we've seen, we could get in that push up going into Tuesday, coming back down to today, kind of just stagnating. Now, I would 99% of the time compare this to a descending triangle, which is 99% of the time pretty bearish, right? Uh, but we need to understand exactly where we are and what's happening here. Now, one, what do we know about descending triangles? They are continuation patterns, okay? That's the first and most important thing to understand with descending triangles, right? They are continuation. So if we're looking at this as a continuation pattern, obviously, um, we're can't continue from a descending triangle to the downside to go back to the upside, right? That doesn't make any sense. Um, so I want to highlight that there first. And then actually, when we go through that more, you can just see this a little bit more clearly right there. Now, on top of this, where are we, where are we sitting at? We're sitting at a massive level, right? And today, we really need to just highlight how strong this level is. You go to the two hour, you can see this is that previous supply zone that we had back here at the top of that supply zone, if you will, when we were getting rejected continuously, basically 394, 393 through 395. We pushed mountain, and we've held above it, right? So you can see that really clear when we zoom in there. Now, we can also see based on flow algo, this is a really helpful tool. You can see if we look at all the levels going back over the last two years, you can see overall liquidity based on the average volume on SPY. If we come down, we can just scroll down and see, you know, 458, we had about 9 billion traded there. We can see a 450, another 8 billion traded there, 441, 10 billion, and so on. Some of these big levels, right? And when we really look at some of these big levels, you get a lot of answers. But when you look at 395.8, 
385 level, it's interesting. It's really interesting to say the least, right? You're at 13 billion right now here. This is one of your prob this is your most traded liquidity level on the book on, on SPY over the past, you know, 2 years, right? I mean, you could kind of insinuate this is really past 8 months give or take where most of this liquidity came in. So I want people to think about what's happening here and the importance of this level because when we come here there's a lot of volume specifically coming in every time we touch this level and it's not going to be an easy level to break. So coming in on the day, and I want to highlight something I said on Twitter. If you're not following on Twitter, I recommend doing so. Um, I'm always posting updates if I'm trading, if I'm not trading. Uh, but yeah, so if we come in here, I want to highlight what I said I was doing on the day. Something really short, sweet, to the point. And I posted this earlier, a picture of the spy chart and where we were. And again, I tend to try to joke around with the community, but basically spy, I'm just sitting here on my hands, Warzone 2 is coming out and there's zero chance that I'm shorting at 395. I'd rather let it break and catch the retest, jobs data in the AM also. Now I want to highlight right now, I actually did grab a short position, but not on indexes. It was more of a fundamental play and that was on Facebook meta. So I want to highlight that. Uh, but I got a few, a little bit of time on that. I will have tight stops also. So if jobs data comes out, great and we start to rock it back up i'll just get stopped out of my trade for about 12 percent, which i'm fine doing that also but again as i'm looking here we understand how strong this level is right we understand the liquidity that's attached to this level we understand tomorrow more important things jobs data coming out right the fed specifically highlighted this also right so everything's kind of coming in tangent showing what's happening here so if you're not trading here, congratulations. If I could, I'd shake your hand and, you know, I would congratulate you because you did the smart thing. Good job. But if we're looking here, again, this is really the writing on the wall because if you break below 395, which you were here for a better part of the day, and when I say break, I mean hold below it. Like on the 15 minute, you can see how often we, you know, we touch this almost like seven times on the day, right? If you break and hold below this, I think you get a 390 test quick. It's it's going to be really quick. Now, the, the counter to that is if we hold above and we have good jobs data and we continue to go up. Now, you know, Goldman released their anticipation of the next rate hike, and they said that they expect a 50 BPS hike and then a 25 after that. Now, this is I'm 25. We're getting a little bit of ahead of ourselves, but whatever. Uh, we're not going to go into that too much right now. But I want to highlight, you know, our next zone we're looking at, we have 403 key level. And then our next supply level is around 409 to 410, which I think is a great target. Jobs data comes out good. I think you got to be looking forward to it, right? 410, 409. I want to highlight that. But definitely on my watch list, right? Now, what are we looking there for? We can see we got a push up rejection from this 401 level. I'm going to go into indexes here in a second. Uh, but this is where that last supply was. It's really clear there. Now I'm going to take the time, pivot over to indexes and show you this also. Again, I wanted to show you where we're at on Q's NASDAQ also. And you can see, in my opinion, this is a supply here on NQ. This is the two hour chart. So you can see pretty clearly. This is your supply level, I mean, or demand, I'm sorry, and you're holding them. So you're holding at this level. We're sitting in between the range of about 1215 down to basically 11.75 roughly. Uh, and I want to highlight, we've spent a majority and a bulk of this time respecting this kind of downtrend that we have now, basically, right? I want to highlight, not even a descending triangle, just kind of a little a, a downtrend. Needless to say that, that's what we're doing right now. That's how we're reacting on the chart. So if I look at anything on the chart, anything on the indexes, I'm. it looks really bad actually. Across the board, it looks pretty bad. The only thing that has a glimmer of hope, in my opinion, is going to be the spy. Even when we look at ES, it's not that great either. We've set, sat in a tighter range, had a little bit of a wick to the upside of 4,040 roughly, but came right back down. And we're spending a, a majority of this time right at that major level once again, which if you want to see exactly where that level is, we're going to go to the four hour chart real quick. Market on your charts, also on Twitter, 39.62, right? It's that previous high, which was at the top of our previous supply, right? That's, it's all there. You know, this is things we've been looking at, right? But you're just not getting that big breakout. Now, if we start to break out of this and we, you know, we, we start moving up on NQ and SPY and we break to the upside out of this resistance, obviously I'm targeting back to 429 and then after that up to around 4100. That's where you got to look for, in my opinion, personally. Now, when we go a little bit deeper and go to something like Dow, you can get more answers here also. And, and again, this chart looks pretty crystal clear here. And now Dow obviously has been one of the big runners. It's been one of the best performers on the broad scale market. It doesn't look bad. 
I want to highlight really quick. This is where your next supply hypothetically would be or demand would be right there. But if we look here, you're coming into that supply. We're coming into that resistance already and we're being rejected so far one, two, three times and pushing back down. Um, so I, I want to make sure this is no. All right, it's really clear where we're at. Dow coming down 32.5. That has to be your support if you're looking here. So if I look at the market, that's what I see. Nothing too complicated. There's nothing to over, you know, analyze here. It's really simple. I was kind of debating if I was gonna make the video today. I wasn't really feeling up to it, but I just wanted to highlight everything to be looking at going into tomorrow. I think it's really simple. It's not over complicated. And if you really come in here too, we got 8.30, so about 7.30 central is when this will be released for me an hour before market open. So before market even opens, you'll have all your answers in my opinion to see how we're moving here. Now I'm gonna go over some stocks I'm looking at, mainly the big ones. And I just wanna show you the overall structure and what's happening here kind of across the board and how things are changing a little bit here also. Also, I, I will recommend looking at Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index. That's gonna be important also tomorrow, not just you know, job claims. I, I think there's gonna be a little bit more than that, but job claims obviously the most important as we look into tomorrow. Now, when we're going to go to some more of these charts, uh, if you have questions, comment down below. I will also be doing some charts on Twitter after this. So again, make sure you are following on there. Let's get into this. So first thing I'm going to go over is Meta. This is probably one of my favorite charts. There's more fundamental viewpoints here. I just don't really want to cover that today. I'll, I'll go over more of that tomorrow or I'll be live also again tomorrow. So make sure you check that out. But again, I want to just want to run through some of these charts as quickly as possible. Now, when we look at Meta, I think it's really important that we look exactly where we are. Um, and this is really where you're at right now. You have to go all the way back to 2016. And this is basically your 2016 lows right there. And you're sitting below it right now, like 113.8. Um, and so that's ultimately around the area that I ended up getting into my short position. And then we also have this level right about here. These are the two areas I want to highlight. Okay, so we're going to come in. You're going to see those levels as we zoom in a little bit more. That's the weekly time frame. So, you know, also now when we come in here and we look at the two hour chart, just to give us the best visual. Um, I, I think we get a lot of answers and we can actually see. Now, if we come into this key level, you can see this was ultimately the top of where I see Meta going in the near term is the 122.5. Um, if by some chance I get stopped out of my position, I will most likely look to get back into Meta puts around the 120 to 122 area, 100%. I think it's just one of the better trades out there. I love it. Um, I, I don't think things have turned around for Meta. I just think we're seeing a big rebound. I think we're seeing shorts covering on the broad scale market. Um, even if we quote unquote have a bottom, I still think Meta will have a pullback just based on the significance of where we're at right now. Now, if we look, we're sitting below that 113.8 and you're getting rejected so far. And this is on the two hour chart. So for the past six hours, roughly seven, you've been getting rejected at this level almost all day. That looks pretty bad just there alone. Now, we also have a little bit of a gap down here, but I don't want to spend too much time talking gaps or anything along those lines. But I will say this level right here will also be very important as well. And then we will also have this one here. So roughly what I'm targeting, I mean, on the short end of the stick, 109 short term, going to 104, 105, possibly down to 102. You might even honestly come back down and fill the gap down here also, down about $97. But again, I think we're getting a little bit of ahead of ourselves. I just like this position a lot. Love Meta. I think it's one of the less risky plays when it comes to having a swing on an equity for the downside. That was my logic getting into it. Really liked it. Fundamentals are also there. Um, but yeah, let's go a little bit further. Going into something like Apple. Again, I just want to go over how these are moving because they're not moving as good, hypothetically, as they were moving before. I want to highlight that really quick. Um, this is my demand. I just want to see where I have this from. It's on the one hour chart. So you can see this is your demand right here. And then you can also see how you're kind of adjusting right now. You can bring that down a little bit more. You can see we're bouncing so far. Again, I highlighted this yesterday. You can see we kind of just had a really sideways chop action day. I mentioned yesterday also, if you started coming down, you're going to come down to the 147 level. You touched it, bounced out of it. Not a big surprise. If you start to break below this demand about the 146.5 level, then I think you're in the works of getting that downside down to 145, roughly, then down to 143. Again, though, what you need to be looking at here is specifically on the spy with that jobs report. Because if you continue to hold the 395 level, I don't think Apple is going to get crushed. But I was talking about this on the live stream with David earlier. If we look here and we really zoom out, let's go to about the daily chart for you. You can see really quick. We have some interesting behavior. here. Actually, let's go to the weekly. You need to go a little bit further out. This is really interesting. We were talking about this on the live for a reason. Let me get rid of this really quick. I don't know why it's not letting me. We'll just use this so you can see. 
you can see on the live chart that we were getting we have about it's it's somewhat of a pennant i, I want to say that i'm not going to call it anything specifically but you can see how we're kind of making these higher lows here right we've we've been making this right it's a really strong pennant of where we've been kind of you know trading at for a long time to say the least right to say the, the very least a long time and and i want to highlight how you're moving and and the importance of the next few days give or take maybe even weeks if we start to see apple making a lower low out of this i think this could be extremely extremely dangerous um, apple if you don't know represents about eight to nine percent of the s p if apple starts to really get hit it's going to be concerning and this is why i'm watching some of these big names right now right not necessarily to go short on them but just to see the overall strength if we go back to june look at the balance that we had back here from June over the next month and a half, roughly, you went to 176. Um, a huge recovery. Awesome. You bought. Congratulations. Your recovery lately hasn't been the same. Granted, not nearly as long, but it's worth mentioning that you just aren't moving the same so far. And you can argue that the S&P is holding up better than it was holding up back here. I'm just saying, you know, do your own DD. Look at what's happening. So these are things you have to be looking at. I will say Apple has released some bad news over the past few weeks in comparison to back here. So I do want to highlight that. But those are the concerns right now on the broad scale market when it comes to these. Now, we can go further into Tesla, and I think Tesla is a little bit of a riskier asset no matter what. Uh, but if you look at what's happening here on Tesla, I mean, it's it's kind of simple. Go to like the two-hour chart. You can see where we're at. We, we hit the 200 marker, but we got rejected pretty clear there. And you can see when we come in here, let me look at Tesla. It's a bear flag. Sorry to say it. Broke down already out of it. You guys see how we're going to move from this. But this is concerning. I would, I would expect a 182 test sometime soon. But that's where I'm looking here. And this is the, the, the big concern for me is how are we going to move going forward? Can we continue to get some love from these stocks? Or are we going to rely solely on the Fed and some of these data points, right? That's the big concern going forward. NVIDIA had earnings today. You didn't get too much of a move. I think the move was like expected like $12, $12 roughly. You, you got a $3 move up. That's not enough here. That's not good. NVIDIA, we needed more upside. We expected a beat from NVIDIA based on what's happening with their China stuff. They, they got a new chip that gets around the rules and regulations that we have now against China to protect our intelligence. So this is this is interesting that we're not seeing the, the move that we want. But I want to highlight, right? I'm not looking for too much downside. I'm not looking for anything special until we get an answer here at the 395 level on SPY. I think 395 gives you your answer. I think it's clear as day. Biggest support level on the indexes. Major, major, major importance here. And it's all going to come down really to this jobs report data in the morning. All of it posted on Twitter. So if you're following me, pay attention there. I'll have more charts coming out. Hopefully, we can get a better video out tomorrow. More trades that we're looking at. Again, it's been slow for me. I almost did no trading today. I grabbed a small position at the end of the day, but that's it. That's all I did. So again, see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Ask your questions and make sure you're on Twitter.